In Revelation's letter to the church of Pergamum, Jesus wrote that they lived where Satan's throne was, where Satan dwelt. Does Satan dwell in a single city in Turkey? Uh, no, we know Satan roams to and fro throughout the earth. But there was a specific item in the city of Pergamum that was Satan's altar. Does it still exist today? The answer is yes, it does. Does it have special evil authority? We'll investigate that a little bit later. Then was it associated with both Hitler and Obama? <laughs> yes, it was. Will it soon also be returned to Turkey and be associated with someone more evil than those men? To stand on its original site. We're going to talk about this as well. As discussions with Germany are happening as we speak, Germany is where that altar is currently located. So if all this is true, is it a sign of an Islamic caliphate forming? You know, 2023 is a very special year in Turkey. So all of this stuff seems to be coming together all at once. So let's talk about it today. Pergamum is one of the seven churches of Revelation that Jesus sent prophetic letters to. It's about 60 miles as the crow flies from the ancient coastal city of Troy and, you know, the Trojan War. And in the days of Jesus and the Apostle John, at the center of town was an enormous Greek sacrificial altar called the Altar of Zeus. Zeus, of course, being another name for Satan. And this may have been what Jesus was referring to when he used the term Satan's throne. Here's what Jesus said about it. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name. You did not deny my faith even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful witness, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Revelation 2, verse 13. Tradition holds the Apostle John ordained Antipas as bishop of Pergamum. So he wasn't just anyone there. He was their bishop during the reign of the Roman Emperor Nero. So this was earlier, maybe 25, 30 years earlier than Jesus wrote the letter to Pergamum, which was part of Revelation, which was like 95 AD. The Greek term translated witness also means martyr. Tradition says he publicly preached Jesus and was arrested and interrogated by the Roman governor, who then ordered his execution when Antipas refused to curse Christ and worship the emperor along with the traditional gods. Tradition says they burned him alive in a large bull-shaped metal statue, similar to the style used in child sacrifice in Israel. So Antipas died on this altar, according to tradition. And the altar still exists, now known as the Pergamum Altar. It's been found. It's a monumental piece of ancient construction. The biggest Greek altar ever found. It's almost 40 yards wide. To an American, that's almost the width of a football field. The base was decorated with a frieze of statues showing a battle between the giants and the Olympian gods known as the Gigantomanchi. There was a second artwork or frieze on the top level, which surrounded the sacrificial altar itself. At the top of the stairs, it depicted events from the life of Telephus, legendary founder of the city of Pergamum and the son of the hero Hercules. Very interesting. Now, what is this art all about? Well, on the one frieze, we have giants and fallen angel gods. Huh. Satan's subjects. And on the other, we have the son of Hercules. Hercules was the son of Apollo, just like Tammuz was the son of Nimrod. They are the Greek versions of those ancient Sumerian gods. So these pictures are depicting Satan and all his subjects very, very appropriate. The Pergamum altar itself is now housed in the Pergamum Museum in Berlin. 
Excavations sponsored by Germany were carried out by Karl Humann between 1878 and 1886. The great altar and many of its sculptures were removed, then taken and reassembled at the museum in Berlin. There's a great deal of controversy now about who this altar really belongs to because it seems Humann did not get permission to take the altar away from Turkey. Now, Hitler was so impressed by the altar, he had a replica made and would give his speeches from it, like a podium. It was from this replica that he launched World War II and the Final Solution, what we now know as the Holocaust, where he killed six million Jews. And he wasn't the only one to be impressed by this altar. When Obama was still a candidate for president, he traveled to Germany to see the altar and was so inspired by it what he did next was absolutely astonishing. Upon returning to the United States, he immediately commissioned the construction of another look-alike altar from which he would make his acceptance speech for his party's nomination in 2007. And he was behind a massive holocaust of his own, as you know. It's called abortion. Two men, both inspired to sacrifice by the throne of Satan. It really tells you something about each of these men. And for the last 30 years, Turkey has been trying to get the altar back. Obviously, Prime Minister, dictator Tayyip Erdogan is impressed by it too, or the demonic spirit that inhabits it. Just this month, however, a German government official agreed and wants to return the altar to Turkey. Berlin's official in charge of anti-defamation efforts Notice that anti-defamation efforts. Hmm. Saraya Gumas has suggested the return of the altar to Pergamum because it was illegally smuggled to Prussia back in the 1870s. <laughs> Wokeism. From an anti-discrimination point of view, she said, all cultural products from other parts of the world do not belong to us. They're here illegally. Can you believe it will be wokeism and the minister of anti-defamation that finally returns the altar to Turkey and ignites what likely will be end time events? I mean, I am just stunned. I can't believe that it is wokeism and political correctness that's finally going to get the altar back to Turkey. I've been watching this altar for the last 10 years or so and I can't imagine that our current events are leading to this return of the altar. Now, we're going to return to the letter of Pergamum. Remember, the letter to Pergamum is a prophetic letter written to the church of Jesus Christ, still on the earth at the third seal of Revelation. The letter to Pergamum is about overcoming that third seal. Now, will the altar be returned to its original location by then? Maybe I think probably. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see it move this year or next year. Strangely, the Pergamum altar exhibit was closed for five years back in 2014 to 2019 for absolutely unknown reasons. I think they may have been preparing it so it could be moved quickly. That at least is my guess, but only time will tell. Like I said, I've been watching this altar for a long time. What is known is that 2023 is a very important year for Erdogan and the Turkish nation. It marks the 100th anniversary of the Lausanne Treaty signed in 1923. 1923. 100 years from 2023. A treaty that marked the breakup of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire was not just a political empire but an Islamic caliphate commanded by a sultan or caliph, sort of a combination of a president and a pope all in one. The head of the empire and the head of the Islamic faith, all in one man. Erdogan would love to be just that, and he would love to reconstruct the old Ottoman Empire again. Wait till you hear how many nations were part of this. Nations like Syria, Lebanon, Iraq, Iran, Egypt, Greece, Bulgaria, Hungary, Macedonia, Romania, Jordan, Israel. I mean, some of Saudi Arabia, 
Sudan, and Libya. <laughs> That's quite a list of countries. It's, you know, maybe a fifth of the world, and certainly most of the oil. Jesus prophetically referred to the breakup of the Ottoman Empire obliquely in the fig tree parable. Did you know that? In Luke's version, Jesus said, look at the fig tree, which is Israel, and all the trees, which are other nations, when they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is near. Luke 21, 29 through 30. These other nations that budded or became nations at the same time as Israel, who are they? They're the nations created during the Lausanne Treaty. Now, Turkey and their president Erdogan are trying to reconstruct this group. And having the throne of Satan back in Turkey would be a big step forward for him. Prophetically, this group of nations is a lot like another famous prophecy, Ezekiel 38, the Gog of Magog alliance. Sudan, Libya, Turkey, Iran, and some of Syria and Iraq are all in that Ezekiel 38 group. So at some point, Turkey will recreate this group. We know it. Now, before we discuss when that might be, because it is very interesting, you might ask yourself, how close are we to the time of the end when these things are going to happen? If you want to know, download our free ebook, 10 Signs We're Already in the Last Days. It's on our website, lastdaysovercomer.org, and there's a QR code on the screen right now that you can just click on. It'll take you right there. There's also a link down in the description. If you haven't grabbed your free copy yet, go get one. Now, back to Satan's throne. In 2023, is there something special about that year? Is there something special about that 100-year anniversary of the treaty? There certainly is for those who live in Turkey. It's been claimed by them that the treaty was signed to be effective for a century and that there are secret articles in the treaty allowing it to expire in July of this year, 2023, allowing Turkey's mining of natural resources, including boron and petroleum, something they were prohibited from doing. And it will also be allowed to acquire new colonial nations. And what is a surprise to most is the caliphate was never really abolished. The office of the caliph was. Here's Article 1 of the Lausanne Treaty. The caliph has been removed from his office because the caliphate is inherent in the meaning and concept of the Republican government. The office of the caliph is abolished. So all that's needed to reinstate it is for Sunni Muslim countries to want to join. They have to have a reason, however. And 2023 and the end of a Lausanne Treaty isn't reason enough for a country to just join with Turkey. <laughs> it's reason enough for Turkey. They'd love to have all these other countries under their control. But it's certainly not enough of a reason for these other countries to give up their sovereignty. But a threat to Sunni Islam is enough of a reason. So what could that threat be? Will it be a military threat from Russia or China? Or will it be a religious threat from the Shia Muslims of Iran? Or could it even be both? We have speculated that the recent Iranian civil problems will cause them to reveal a man that they claim is the 12th Imam, their Mahdi. The Mahdi is, after all, the Muslim Messiah. They look forward to the return of the Mahdi in the same way we look forward to the return of Jesus. So, in Shia world, the return of this 12th Imam would be an incredible, uplifting thing. Shia Muslims all over the world would follow him. But to the Sunnis, it would be like a false Jesus announcing himself to Christians. They aren't going to follow a Shia Muslim messiah. They expect the messiah to be Sunni, their branch of Islam. It would be something big enough, I think, for them to join together and form a caliphate and maybe something that would make them angry enough to go to war about. More on that in a second. But it might also be something God and his angels call the throne of Satan. Notice Jesus said it was Satan's throne. 
a Muslim man ruling the Muslim world in Sharia law would sit symbolically right on Satan's throne. It would be something Satan would want. And if the literal Satan's throne returned from Germany to coincide with that, well, that would be something very, very appropriate, something worth writing in the letter to Pergamum. So we'll see in both regards. Right now, all of this is just still speculation, but I think it's very likely speculation. But what isn't speculation is the biblical idea that an empire based in Turkey attacks Iran and defeats it. In Daniel 8, 1 through 8, we see a future prophecy of two kingdoms, a ram based in the modern day Iran and a goat based on the land mass of northern Turkey and southern Greece, the land around Istanbul. Now, why does this seem to us to be a caliphate? Well, Istanbul is the traditional capital of the caliphate. Immediately after the Muslims defeated the Eastern Roman Empire in Constantinople, the Muslims changed the city's name to Istanbul, and it was their capital, and it remained the capital until the Lausanne Treaty in 1923. So seeing a landmass mentioned in the Bible surrounding Istanbul makes us think it might be a new caliphate that will form there and be based in Istanbul and have Istanbul as its capital once again. Muslim clerics have said repeatedly that the only caliphate they will recognize is one based in Istanbul. So again, this points to a possible caliphate. Daniel 8 says this kingdom of the goat becomes very great. Seems like that might apply to a caliphate where one man rules all the Muslim world like a religious pope and a secular king combined. This caliph, however, is immediately taken down and the caliphate is broken up once it forms by an undisclosed power. We have surmised it might be the Russian-China alliance that's forming right now that takes them down. But that's only our guess. What's important is that someone else then gets to control Satan's throne. And that person is the Antichrist. And Daniel 8 tells us all about it as well. Click right here to keep watching and discover what part of the world this man, the Antichrist, will come out of and what actions he takes after he arises. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.